Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Oni de Guzman, and our topic for today is Illustrating Rational Algebraic Expressions. Our objectives today, we have number one, define rational algebraic expressions. Number two, identify rational algebraic expressions. Number three, evaluate rational algebraic expressions. And finally, relate rational algebraic expressions in real life situations. So if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive notifications about my new videos. Before we proceed to our topic, let us identify whether the following expression is a polynomial or not. Tell P if it is a polynomial and NP if it is not. So number 1, x plus 3. So this is a polynomial. Number 2, x raised to negative 4. This is not a polynomial. Number 3, 2D. This is a polynomial. Good. Number 4. 3c squared plus 2c is also a polynomial. Very good. Number 5. 3d raised to negative 2 plus 1. This is not a polynomial. Number 6. Square root of x plus 2. So, this is not a polynomial. To explain the rational algebraic expression, it is an expression that can be written in the form of p over q, where p and q are polynomials, and q must not be equal to zero. So the question is, how will you know that expression is a rational algebraic expression? So let's consider 6 all over x minus 3. This is a rational algebraic expression because the denominator is a polynomial as well as the numerator is a polynomial. Next, okay, 18n plus 1 all over n squared plus n minus 2, okay, is also a rational algebraic expression because the numerator and denominator is both, okay, polynomial. Next, y squared all over y cubed minus 3. So this is also a rational algebraic expression because the numerator and denominator is also a polynomial. Finally, we have 5x squared plus 6x minus 11 all over 1 is also a rational algebraic expression because both numerator and denominator is actually a polynomial. However, if we will consider the following items, okay, 3x minus the square root of x all over 5 times square root of x is not actually a rational algebraic expression because the variable x is inside the radical symbol. Also, if we have 8x minus the square root of y all over x plus 6 is not also a rational algebraic expression because Okay, y is inside the radical symbol. As well as 2y raised to negative 2 minus 3 all over x plus 6. Take note that y has a negative exponent. On our fourth example, this is not also a rational algebraic expression because x has a negative exponent. Finally, this expression is not a rational algebraic expression because, number one, the denominator, okay, okay, we have here the denominator 7x raised to negative 4 plus 5 has, okay, a negative exponent. To be considered as rational algebraic expression, so it must be in fraction form, okay, next, both numerator and denominator are polynomial expression. And lastly, must not have a negative exponent, a radical sign, or a fraction exponent in the variable or variables in both numerator and denominator. Recall that the rational algebraic expression is a fraction such that the denominator is not equal to zero. 
you need to pay attention to what values of the variables that will make the denominator equal to zero. These values are called excluded values. How are you going to determine the excluded values in a rational algebraic expression? So, we have step number one. Equate the denominator to zero. So, our denominator here is equal to x minus 3. So, equate that to zero. Second is solve for the variable. So, I'll add both sides of the equation by 3. So, I have here x is equal to 0 plus 3 or x is equal to 3. So, therefore, the expression 6 all over x minus 3 is undefined at x is equal to 3 because the denominator will be 0. Let's have example number 2. So, identify the value of x that will make 6x all over 2x minus 4 undefined. Again, we equate the denominator to 0. Our denominator is equal to 2x minus 4. So, that is equal to 0. Then, solve for the variable. I'll add both sides of the equation by 4. So, I had 2x is equal to 0 plus 4 or 2x is equal to 4. Then, using the multiplication property of equality, I'll divide both sides of the equation by 2, so x is equal to 2. Therefore, the expression 6x all over 2x minus 4 is undefined at x is equal to 2 because the denominator will be 0. Let's have example number 3. Identify the value of x that will make x squared plus 3x minus 5 all over x squared minus 1 undefined. Again, we will equate the denominator is equal to 0. So we have x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. But take note that, okay, I would like to solve for the variable x. So I have here x squared is equal to 0 plus 1. So x squared is equal to 1 and take the square root of both sides so x is equal to positive or negative 1. So therefore, the expression x squared plus 3x minus 5 all over x squared minus 1 is undefined at x is equal to 1 and x is equal to negative 1 because the denominator will be 0. Let us consider example number 4. Identify the value of x that will make x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x all over x squared minus 5x plus 6 undefined. Again, we will let the denominator is equal to 0. So meaning to say that is x squared minus 5x plus 3 is equal to 0. Recall the, okay, the factoring method that we have discussed last time. Again, so we will look for the factors of 6, okay, such that the sum is equal to negative 5. So, then we will solve for the variable x. So, the factors are x minus 3 and x minus 2 is equal to 0. So, by 0 property, okay, I have here x minus 3 is equal to 0. On the other hand, x minus 2 is equal to 0. Solving for x here, x minus 3 is equal to 0. Add both sides by 3. So I have here x is equal to 3. On the other hand, if I add both sides of the equation by 2, so x is equal to 2. So therefore, the expression is undefined at x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 2 because the de denominator will be 0. You can verify that if the excluded value or values is substituted in the expression, it is always n up to division by 0. However, that there are some values that will make the expressions defined too. This process is called excluding the expression. So let us consider example number 5. Evaluate the expression y squared minus 1 all over y cubed minus 3 when y is equal to 2 as well as y is equal to 5. Again, to do that, we will let y is equal to 2. 
can substitute that to the given expression. Okay, so we have here y squared minus 1 all over y cubed minus 3. Alright? So, I'll plug in the numbers to here. Then, simplify. So, take note that 2 squared is equal to 4, while 2 cubed is equal to 8. So, I have here 4 minus 1 all over 8 minus 3. So, this is equal to 3 over 5 if y is equal to 2. On the other hand, if y is equal to 5, again, I'll start up with the given expression y squared minus 1 all over y cubed minus 3. Then, okay, I'll substitute y is equal to 5. Okay, so I change y into 5. Plug in the value 5. So take note that 5 squared is equal to 25, while 5 cubed is equal to 125. So therefore, I have here 25 minus 1 all over 125 minus 3. Simplifying it further, I have 24 all over 122. But this is still reducible. So think of a number that can divide 24 and 122. So that is actually divisible by 2. So I have 12 over 61. Let's try more examples. So evaluate the expression 5x all over 3x minus 9 when x is equal to 4 and x is equal to negative 5. So again, so we will let x is equal to 4. So given expression 5x all over 3x minus 9 so, I'll substitute the value of x, which is equal to 4. Okay? And plug in. x is equal to 4. So, take note that 5 times 4 is equal to 20, while 3 times 4 is equal to 12. Okay, so I have 20 all over 12 minus 9. Simplifying it further, I have 20 over 3. So, this is the value of the expression at x is equal to 4. On the other hand, if x is equal to negative 5, again, I'll start with the given expression, okay? Then substitute the value of x, which is equal to negative 5. So, I'll put it blank first, then plug in the value of negative 5. Take note that 5 times 5 is negative 25, while 3 times negative 5 is equal to negative 15. So, I have negative 25 all over negative 15 minus 9. Simplifying it further, I have negative 25 all over negative 24, or this is equal to 25 over 24. So to elaborate our discussion, let's apply what we have learned into word problem. So Vaness can finish writing a module in X hours, while his brother Ryan can finish writing the same module in Y hours. Write an expression that will illustrate the rate of work to finish the writing the module. So again, I have the characters Vanessa and Ryan. Then, the time in hours, according to the problem, Vanessa can finish that in X hours, while Ryan can finish that into Y hours. Now, if I'm okay, interested to the part of 4 per hour, so meaning to say, so I'll divide 1 by X. Since, okay, rate is equal to work divided by your time. So, in the same manner, the rate of Ryan is 1 over y. So, this is actually the okay, expression that will okay, illustrate the rate of work of Vanessa and Ryan. So, we have 1 over x and 1 over y respectively. Let's try another word problem. The area of rectangle is x squared minus 121 square units. While its width measures x plus 11 units. 
illustrate a rational algebraic expression in finding the length of the rectangle. Let's recall that area is equal to length times width. Okay? But if I want to find out the length, I'll divide both sides of the equation by the width. So therefore, length is equal to area divided by the width. Then substitute the value of area. So area is x squared minus 121 divided by the width is equal to x plus 11. So the length of the rectangle can be illustrated as x squared minus 121 all over x plus 11 units. Marie takes x hours to plant 20 flower bulbs. Francine takes y hours to plant same number of flower bulbs. What expression represents the rate of Marie and Francine working together? Let's recall that, okay, 1 over x is equal to the rate of Marie, okay? While the rate of Francine is 1 over y. We are interested, okay, for the expression that represents the rate of Marie and Francine working together. So, I'll add 1 over x plus 1 over y. So, therefore, the rate of Marie and Francine working together is 1 all over x plus 1 all over y. Okay, to determine whether you understand our topic or not, so try to answer the following items. Be careful in solving the items. So, thank you so much for a very productive day. Again, this is Teacher Oni de Guzman. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to receive notification about my new videos.